you're looking to start a podcast, looking to further bravery, Studios is the place to make it happen. New Jersey's number one podcast studio. All you have to do is come here and speak and leave the rest to us. We handle the production. We do the editing, uploading, graphics, logos, everything. You name it, we do it here in Bravery Studios. Don't let these ideas live rent-free in your mind any longer. Come to Bravery. Become a brave heart. Start your podcast today. I want to send a lot of love and positive energy to the goddess here. Thank you for pulling up here to Bravery Studios. You definitely enlightened me, put me onto a lot of different concepts that I wasn't aware of. Uh, taught me about the celestial entities that reside above us and shared your essence with me for an hour and a half. I dug that, I dug that. They didn't know me off a campaign and agreed to this interview. Shout out to the entire Memphis Collective, Spec, Ash, Austin. You guys are awesome. Gotta see, I definitely enjoyed our time together. Make sure to subscribe, thumbs up, notification bell if you like what you've seen. And if you want to see more interviews from us here at Bravery Studios, take it away. Shout out to our sister, the tour mate, the goddess, goddessy. Yeah, goddessy. Honestly, I'm fucking with you boys. Big Big you, girl. Love you, big homie. So I already know how this is going to go, too. You already know? I already know because... You're psychic. <sighs> on Tuesdays. <And> but... <laughs> When you walked into my office the other day, I was like just studying your speech patterns and your articulation. Mm -hmm. And you have this like cool jazz way of speaking. People say I speak in metaphors. You do. <laughs> you do. So I already know. I'm going to tell the viewers now. This is going to be a challenge for me. Because, uh, you know, when I meet someone who can articulate very well, I got to keep up with them. <laughs> I'm already out of breath thinking about it. Like, whew, this is going to be <laughs> tough. This is going to be tough. Because no, you not. have, it's going to be fluid. You have a really cool way of speaking. I'm grateful. You speak a lot of cool jazz. <laughs> Thank you. So, viewers, let me know by the end of this. Did I match her genacity? We'll find out. But thank the heavens for today, because I'm sitting next to the goddessy. Thank you. Welcome to Jersey. I am grateful to be here, all the way from Memphis, 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 the beautiful land of the world, Maine. What do you dream about, Goddessy? What do I dream about? Literally? No. <laughs> oh, we don't speak in literals here. We don't speak I don't in even literal. know what a literal is. What, what does that mean? Who knows? I have no idea what that means. But I dream of what my reality looks like. My dreams exist. Elaborate, so, and let's collaborate on that thought. I got you. Yeah. So people always... Say, like, follow your dreams, but sometimes dreams can just seem so out of grasp, as if they're, like, in the clouds, the sky's the limit. But if the sky was the limit, there wouldn't be footsteps on the moon. So I try to speak what I see in my imagination into my, like, real concrete life. Because what I dream about, I want to live. So why is it a dream and not my lifestyle, my way of living, my habits, my routine? I'll match what I imagine. Bingo. You think Biggie lied to us or he just didn't know? <laughs> Did he lie? He just didn't know. Sometimes, didn't know, right? Sometimes you learn as you go. Yeah, because he would have made a part two and he would have said, no, we're going past this guy now. We're 
know, past the sky. Facts, past and I feel it. like, I feel like those Sacconis say a lot about you. Like you only wear Sacconis if you're deep minded, right? You know those those sneakers you're wearing, right? Oh, they were gifted to me for a good reason. They were. I was. I Did they just fall that. from heaven, or what was it? I walked into this um, space that I don't go in often, but my friends are a black girl in like hookah lounge. In Memphis, Tennessee, Oasis Hookah Lounge. Shout out to them. It's just a really nice and quaint space that I haven't been to since I was like first getting into college. And I just went one day, and a photographer that I've worked with is actually the, the social media coordinator and bit coordinator. And he was like, Oh my goodness, I haven't seen you in a long time. I have some five and a halfs because not a lot of people wear size five and a half shoes, so they were just kind of sitting there. Because they were giveaways. And he was like, here you go. They're going to only fit you. They've just been sitting here for a long time. These five and a halves, they hit. I see that, yeah. I'm not a shoe head, but the they're very powerful for me. I love these shoes. And you said you haven't been in a long time. How long have you had those sneakers for? Just a few weeks, maybe a month at most. Oh, okay. So you They were just there. given to me. They've just had them for a minute. They're like sponsors right now. This, you know, you're a artist. Mm-hmm. You consider yourself an R&B artist. You consider yourself. I consider myself like neo soul, neo soul, alternative R&B. Yeah, I dig it. Nintendo has been on repeat <laughs> on my in my kitchen. Nintendo. Favorite. How, how'd you come up with that name? Because the vision, the vision I have for it is me in a game room playing a game, and it goes into this scene where he goes into the tv and i'm playing this dude and he's mario and i'm controlling him in a mario game because i'm not your nintendo you made him not gonna play gang with me and i'm not your hoe either you gotta you respect go. me because i play video games so Com- is he gonna play the player the boss your player one you said in the lyrics player one i'm the boss level there you go i dig it i dig <laughs> it i dig it so when did this start when did you start uh singing what got you into this? What prophecy foretold you this is where you're meant to be? Um, though I'm not a hugely religious person. I used to go to church a lot growing what's, up. What's that? What's religion? Exactly. I believe in God, not religion. Religion is man-made. I right. honor religion because it, it gives people guidance. The people who study the Bible or the Quran or different holy texts, they truly have messages to give. But at the end of the day, your connection with God it's what makes you truly divine and it will helps you heal and heal yourself and heal other people because otherwise you're just judging everybody. But I used to go to church a lot growing up and I sang in the little children's choir and I had this little background role, but the person who made the lead singing role got in trouble. The second verse, she was scared to do the song by herself, but I just so happened to know all the words to the song. Even though I only had, like, one part in the song at first. I just knew the whole song because I loved the song that we were singing. How old were you? Like, eight. eight I knew eight the whole long. song beginning to end. Two people were in trouble, and I told them I knew how to sing the song. So I sang it for them, and they were like, well, you have to sing it in front of the whole church. And I did. And at that point, I was like, oh, I can sing. Wow. I actually stopped going to church a little bit after that. But at least I know I can sing now. That that is a is a common tale. A lot of people. And I ended up going to a performing arts school. Did like a cappella choir, jazz choir, show choir, and musical theater is my biggest background. I did like plays. I was Glenda the Good Witch. Hey. <laughs> and the Wiz. <laughs> the Wiz. I did um, your good man Charlie Brown as Sally, the sister. S- Sally was mean. <laughs> Sally was. Uh, I was a question. I'm not. I'm not sure. I remember the Charlie Brown That's characters. Charlie? What she mean? She was the one with the black hair, Blonde right? Blonde hair. Oh no, 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 no. She was. She wasn't bad. She was just a little bit. Whoever was ditzy. the brunette, she was mean to Charlie Brown. Yeah, she was. And I think, I think uh, Charlie, if he came out today, we would find out that he has a couple, you know, mental health issues. He needs to take care of. Just letting them bully him like that. They he did, did not deserve he that. He didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve it. But it was different times. But yes, I just re- I just remember that moment. It was very impactful, a very moment of self-empowerment and confidence because I always liked singing to myself, singing in the background. 
But at that moment, I challenged myself because it, it was needed at the moment. I wanted to fill a need. Because I'm not Charlie Brown, all right? But I was also like, oh, I'm scared <laughs> to sing in front of all these people. I'm only eight years old. There's a little Charlie Brown in you. Yes, yeah, a little Charlie <laughs> Brown in me. That's how you bring it around. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Precisely. So when, when did you open up? When did you say, I'm confident now I could do this jazz? Oh, not until I was like 18. Really? Like 10 years later. So even you're, though you're in theater school, you're in oh, you theater. I always, I always said that I was able to sing in front of so many crowds with theater because I was another character. I got to pretend to be somebody else. So I could sing in front of anybody when I was singing a musical song or I was portraying myself as somebody else. But when it came to singing original pieces, going to the studio... Being in spaces like that, I really panicked and had anxiety attacks. I had my first like studio session in 10th grade with Gangsta Pat. He's an iconic Memphis legend, Patrick Hall. And we did a rendition to Heartbreaker by Pat Benatar. And I just remembered singing a few takes and then having a moment of crying and telling my mom, okay, I don't want to record this song anymore. I want to go. I apologize for embarrassing this Myself, you. Did you do bad? Like, what what happened? The video we put out got like 13K views in like two weeks, but I would never show anybody. So people to this day, it's not under my name or anything. So So what were you apologizing for? I was like, this all sounds terrible. I don't want to be here. (laughs) Worst experience ever. I didn't go back to the studio until I was in college. Oh, wow. But what changed then? What, what, What ignited the fire? Heartbreak. Of course. It always is that sometimes. Or sadness or grief a lot of times. It was more so a space of I had had nothing else to do with my time. I was second semester of my freshman year of college. And somebody was like, I want to marry you. And you have my children and all these things since I was like 17. When I was like, oh, that's too fast. All of a sudden, wanted to like switch up. So having to, just have school, it was like school and sleep for me because I'm a very studious person. I was not a part, I'm not a partier. I've only been to one college party. So I was cool with going to the basement of the Performing Arts building and just recording snippets for my friends on their computer. So that's all I did for a little bit. And then we transitioned to a studio and I record their hooks and stuff. And I just transitioned to myself. And then I came to New York and recorded myself doing an open mic poetry night and I had some like files that I played and sang over my over some tracks and put it on YouTube and some people some producers and event planners from Tennessee reached out to me to perform and it kind of started my goddessy journey because I met a producer at one of the events but Loki started from coming to the east coast and putting my music out there for just a second boom goes the dynamite that's what the east coast does for you (laughs) Now, these schools can break you down, too, but <laughs> good thing in your case. It did not. It, that it had a positive effect on you. But yes, heartbreak, emotions. And how old are you at this point? 23. Okay. Yes. That's now you're 23. Yes, and now I'm 23. So, and so that was four years ago. Mm-hmm. You've been rocking and rolling ever since. I've been rocking and rolling for like four years now. Amen. So now some you're here. That's a long time to some. For me, it's like I feel like I haven't been doing it that much yet. Not enough to say I'm a professional. No, you're definitely professional. That's for sure. But I am enjoying my journey. You got to manifest that part. I say. Yeah, yeah, right. So how did you meet the fine gentleman in the other room over there? A spec. Spec. Ash Leon Ash. and Austin Cruz. They are all a part of the collective Inca Company with amazing artists from Memphis, Tennessee. Back in 2018, when I first started making music, being a sad girl, just getting out in the city whenever I go home to Memphis from college, I would just go out to different art galleries, different local concerts, local events with my camera, because I started out as a photographer, bringing my camera places, taking pictures of artists, because I knew I would get their social media, and they could see I made music. I was like, I do both, <laughs> but you got to connect because I took dope pictures of you. So I was just running around, and 
I was hanging out with a friend and Ash asked to use my camera because I was taking a break from mingling. And they're like, can we take, take a picture of you with your camera? So I was like, sure. And from there, Speck took my camera <laughs> the same like night and took some pictures of Ash and I. And we had just like met each other that night. It was like a night in 2018. Ended up at the studio with Speck a few years later. And shout out to Dame Mufasa because they just were like, pull up to the studio. Let's record a song. That's what's up. I was just there to like sit and listen to them recording a song. I didn't even know I was going to put a verse on anything. Before that point, did you have a collective? Mm-mm. You were never part of any groups? No, just stumbled into. And the chemistry these just people. was there already. Mm-hmm. We started out at Studio 88 with some other dope artists, and we've just transitioned into In Good Company. Gotcha, gotcha. So, what got you guys here to Jersey? My this time around. Jersey, this time around, I am here on my very first tour ever. My very first music tour, Good Vibes with the Goddessy and Friends tour. Amen. I stopped D.C. first, met Amber. The collab cook-up sessions were immaculate. Came to Jersey for a QXT show. I've been around Jersey for a bit, and then we go to Brooklyn tomorrow, and then we end in Philly on Sunday, and then I have a few shows other places like NOLA, in Memphis later on in the year and into next year. But my time here has been extravagant. I've truly enjoyed Jersey. And the people that I've met and engaged with have truly been so welcoming and so inspiring. The creative spaces that I've been in have been so open to my energy. And I feel that I've been able to take in a lot of new information that I can learn how to be a better version of myself as an individual and as a creative. I dig it, I dig it. And let me tell you, for Will to bring you guys back here, Will doesn't have company off. And actually I'm gonna I'm gonna say he never has brought anyone back here. I have to show you, you guys were the first. So that's uh that's a big deal. Oh I'm you know so he trusted honored. you guys. And um when you walked to my office, I think you took your shoe off shoes off immediately <laughs> and put your feet on my couch. <laughs> I didn't want to put my shoes and I was like, like "Who is this pumpkin spice <laughs> of a woman? A lady of a lady." My granddad says, "Not all ladies are women, but not all women are ladies because the equivalent of a lady is a gentleman." I dig that. So I dig I that. Call myself a lady. But yeah, you you had a lot of confidence, and and you were very comfortable immediately. Started watching a uh, what show were we watching? Some brutal show. I'm already losing my they thought process. They don't, he doesn't speak. He doesn't speak. Oh. And and you gave barbarian. me a spiel of your name. It was like a rap song almost the way you told me your name. You were like, I'm the goddessy with an E, but I'm also a G. But yes. Repeat it for me. I'm the goddessy. I'm a goddess, you see? But I'm deep like the ocean, like the sea. But you spell it with the I-E, goddessy. And my friend, he goes by Odyssey, the Oddish G. And I was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a gangster and a goddess. Odyssey, goddessy. Oh, I get that. And it just, it just was so fluid. So in the moment, I always shout out Odyssey because he truly awakened me to my energy with his radiance, with that, with that name. His name is Poppin'. When you said that to me, I think I heard, like, you ever turned on a PlayStation 2? Yes. And the sound it makes. True. <laughs> yes. I, I was still like, love the PlayStation too. You play Nemo on that. I'm like, what is she saying to me right now? Nemo <laughs> and, oh my goodness, Over the Hedge. <laughs> Over the Hedge. Those were that two was PlayStation a... 2 games that were lit. Over the Hedge was complex. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll bring you back here. He must have saw something in you guys for sure. Definitely. I truly enjoyed Will's energy. It was very, very warm. Yeah. I didn't know that we were th- we were the first, so I'm so grateful. I feel so so he's, accepted. He's the heart of this place. He's the sh- the chef. He's the spirit. Uh, if I'm out anywhere, I'm probably outside with him somewhere doing something. Got you. That's a yeah. beautiful connection to have with somebody that you work with and share space with. Absolutely love that man. Absolutely love that. We have matching wolf rings. Oh yes. All the pack. fellas here are uh, wolf pack. Love that. 
Yeah, that is divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Wolf Pack. Yeah, so I got to listen to a lot of your music. I've been listening to it nonstop the whole week. And uh, <laughs> talk to me about the the verse you have with Ash on Fever 777. <laughs> Fever 777 was quite a fun little, little, little few bars. We were just sitting there. He invited me to a session just to listen in. And then he was like, oh, you should do the first part of the, the chorus because I want you to be the masculine and yeah, I be the feminine and he be the feminine that. and they be the feminine energy. So I was like, period, I got you. So my verse had to match that. And I always say that I'm a damsel, but not in distress, but in a dress. I love that. So I'm a damsel in distress. Come and take it off. Like take off take off this dress. See my soul. See my light. And I have a Leo Venus. So being a Gemini son, I'm very detached, sometimes illogical about relationships with my Leo Venus. Leo's being the son and so full of the lion of the pack. They want to be the leader. I love admiration and attention from one person when I do like them. But otherwise, leave me alone. (laughs) So when I'm truly obsessed with you, it's like, you know, I like you. You know, I want you. Don't play with me. And Leo men. In general, Leo people, they know what they want and they go after what they want because they think they're the king and queen of the jungles, which is why I respect Leo so much. And Ash is a Leo. And it is all tied in together with this divine masculine energy meeting divine feminine energy and how it can be fun when it's the cat and mouse chase sometimes with the energy. I see it now, yeah. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. You said my dick is the ride. My dick is the wave and you ride on it. My dick is the wave and you ride on it. <laughs> Get out of the way. Don't you try, homie. It's not like you made for the vibe, homie. <laughs> round of applause. I think I have a round of applause button, but I'm not going to hit it. <laughs> but um, what's next for me is dabbling into creating an album called pitiful princess persephone a poetry jazz music project that i really want to put on vinyl i filmed a music video for sway which is the musical rendition of pitiful princess persephone the poetry story but even though i filmed it september 2021 oh wow it probably won't come out until 2023 because I'm a perfectionist and. Oh, that's a horrible trait to have. Yes. That's a horrible trait. But it's like a music video that's supposed to have like a poetry. I dig it. Interlude, I dig it. And I need this poetry part to be well put together okay. before I mash it with my music video part. Yeah. And until it meets exactly what I see in my head. I just keep looking at it in my Google Drive like, <laughs> let me tell these directors what I can tell them to fix because I don't think this is looking okay. So pitiful- Not because of the <laughs> editing, but because I need to add more to it. I, I hear you. And trying to recreate a whole plot and blueprint of what I want to add to it. When it's already a whole movie's video finished. <laughs> it's like, do I put it out and then do a an additional like bonus visual later on in life? Because I just have what I have. I like imperfections. I, I, I love it when things are imperfect. I try. I'm trying to get out of that Virgo rising perfectionism energy. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning how to bask in satisfaction. It's been a, a learning process. Because I can achieve things, but I'm all, once it's achieved, I'm always thinking of what I could have done better and oh. what can be next over basking in the feeling of the fact that I did something and I did good at something, I will literally breeze over that to figure out what I can plot on next. <laughs> so I'm learning how to truly bask in feeling good and happy with what I have done and what I am doing over constantly trying to beat myself up about what isn't done yet. Who is pitiful Persephone? Persephone. I knew I was going to butcher it. It's okay. <laughs> It's too many. <laughs> See, Normally, I would have gone by Isis, Isis and Osiris, because those are the Egyptian gods. I think I met them once. Oh, Osiris, the god of the underworld. Mm-hmm. 
Isis, the uh, mother goddess. Had a dream in Taco Bell. But continue. Okay, Taco Bell. Was it? Never mind. Persephone. <laughs> I just wanted to make you smile. <laughs> Persephone <laughs> is the goddess of springtime in Greek mythology. And she marries the god of the underworld, which is Hades. Some say that she was kidnapped. Others say that she got lost and stumbled into Hades on her own. And if you eat anything in the underworld, you're stuck there. So they fall in love or whatever in the underworld. And she eats the pomegranate, which means she has to stay in Hades forever. Which makes her mother Demeter terribly upset. So it's a cold front put over the world until Persephone agrees to be on Earth for six months, spring and summer, and with her husband for winter, fall and winter time. And this is the concept of Persephone and Hades, Isis and Osiris, when it comes to the concept of love. How you can be with somebody and it feels like it's flourishing and dying. Sometimes also, when you're away from somebody, you can feel like you're flourishing. Or sometimes you can feel like you're dying. It just depends on the circumstances. But I always say that I am a garden, not a snack. Not a full course meal, but a garden because if you nurture me forever, then I'll be able to feed you and give you shelter and give you beauty forever. But only if you water me. Or you can indulge in a snack for once and have to find a new one. But as long as I'm cared for and catered to, then I can serve. And with that, I'm melting right it's now. also how love should be and community should be. What nurtures you. Should be able to, you should be able to give back to that completely. Because you can't pour from an empty cup. As long as I'm pouring out, I should be watering the people around me. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I want from love. And sometimes you don't get that. Sometimes you can pour into a situation that doesn't grow. Like if you water, say, a rose, a seed in the desert, sometimes that flower is just not meant for that environment. And learning how to accept those moments that aren't for you, that aren't meant to help you grow, but more were just to be an experience, a feeling. Just because of, just because you walk through the desert doesn't mean you want to live there forever without certain resources. But the same thing with the rainforest. Not every plant or flower will thrive in the rainforest like it would in the desert. Not every animal is meant for a certain location. Sometimes... An animal that will thrive in a location that's invasive and kills everything else in that vicinity because it's not native to that location. And realizing that with your relationships with people is important. With situations, with jobs, with hobbies, what was truly meant to just make you feel good for a moment, but it's not actually nurturing you or watering you or becoming the fertilizer or the resources that you need to flourish. And as Persephone... I've experienced my fair share of a relationship that I felt like I was growing, but also a part of me was dying in a sense that I was killing off a certain aspect of myself and having to reevaluate how I define love, how I define a relationship, and remolding myself to fit what I want to be for my own life because it also takes you taking steps to be different. You can't walk into a new environment and expect to do the same things you did in the past one. I wouldn't walk into the desert with the same things I had on in the Arctic because it's all about not only perception, but truly taking reality into consideration and realizing that your dreams can be reality when you take your whole life in the, in the eyes of life and how you can create more life. But if you don't take into consideration your resources, you won't be able to create anything because it'll just be chaos and brainstorm thoughts that aren't being put together. Persephone put things together. Gorgeous. <laughs> the back of an of a album cover. No, the back of a novel. You know how it, it summarizes the story and... And it articulates the main ideas. Yes. You just did that. In Hades, Hades and Persephone are one of the only Greek like couples that I've like read about that are actually a healthy couple. Like Zeus has a lot of mistresses was toxic, and was right? raping women, unfortunately, taking advantage of people. And all the other Aries, it's just crazy. Hades was loyal to his wife. He might have been about death. 
and the afterlife, but you can't have one without the other. And in Greek mythology, the afterlife is just a, a bridge of all the spirits anyway. He could have punished them in the afterlife, but it wasn't necessarily hell to be. In the afterlife, you had the river of souls that was transporting these spirits. So obviously, the afterlife was taking them where they needed to go. But I'm all about gods. Gods. I like I like That's them. why you're the goddess. That's why I'm the goddess. Yeah. The Orishas I, are the, my thing mostly, though. I honor the Orishas. I'm putting together the pieces of the puzzle now and I'm seeing what where the name comes from. So when did you finally land on that name? It's been my name since like twenty um since high like my senior year of high school, so twenty seventeen. I think I turned it was like the goddess. It's like right before I graduated. How did you come up with it? Odyssey guy? The goddess Odyssey guy. Odyssey the <laughs> Odyssey. I don't mean to call you the Odyssey guy. <laughs> no, Odyssey the Odyssey, the Lemon King. Yeah. I was scrolling on like Facebook or something one day. I had done photography for him at a concert. We had just been following each other. I was just casually scrolling and I saw his name and never realized the full name was Odyssey the Odyssey. I always just called him Odyssey. And I was like, the Odyssey G. I say I'm a goddess and a gangster. I'm a goddessy. So now I could be like, I'm an OG out here. The original goddessy. The original gangster. <laughs> the original goddessy I gangster. Dig that. I dig it. And that just it just flows. And, and, and it fit when I said it. I just felt I felt really connected to it. You know, as you grow when you're a kid and stuff, you always have these like personas you want to be if you want to be like a celebrity. I always had random names growing up or random like Superstar names like Hannah Montana vibes that I wanted to call myself. <laughs> yeah. And I never stuck with them. My Instagram name from like when I first got one until Goddessy had been like six, seven different things. I stuck with Rebelled for a long time. It was like Rebelled. I was like, this is going to be my name. Rebelled. And it was that people would like speak to me and call me that and be like, I know you. And then I was just like, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't even seem like it's a not name. Cute. It's not cute. <laughs> it wasn't cute. It was like my grunge. Oh, you had my a grunge, grunge era? era? Everybody has a little, a little bit of emo a grunge phase. era. Yes. Just me. It, was, it wasn't It was like heavy metal. Just like a little Nirvana and gor- gorillas. You have black nails? Uh, I'm not okay. a big nail polish person. It wasn't too bad. Okay. No, no, no. But I, I dig the... I dig the... the Knee high converses, though. Knee high converse. Knee high converse with the knee high socks, like gray and then the they black. They made socks. those. I have them still. I got them in like fifth grade, and I can still fit my shoes, so I still have my pair of knee high converse. Up to there. Like st- up to my knees. <laughs> I have knee high Timberlands too. I seen the. Uh, yeah, my mom has got them too. back from like when yeah. she was a young girl. She passed them down to me. They like the patchwork Tims. What are you the goddess of? Because every god has his like, hey, I'm I'm the god of this jazz. I'm the god of water. I'm the god of. I never thought about that. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm making her think over here. Shout out to Jersey. Shout we make out you think. To Jersey, <laughs> that's a difficult question. What would you be the goddess of? I feel like it's gonna change after I give you an answer, but I have to think of it. Always changes. Answer. You're gonna change, and we all change all the time. I think I am. Ah. <laughs> A goddess of authenticity and vulnerability. Important. Why? I am not afraid to cry in front of people or influence other people to be emotional. My main prerogative as an artist, as an individual, is to be a reflection of how whatever you're going through you can make beautiful with gratitude and joy and I know not everybody's situation is as good or as bad as another's but being graceful and allowing yourself to be soft not only with your well not only with others but with yourself forgiving yourself is really important because we can hold on to things not talk to somebody that we feel like is mad at us only because we feel guilty about something that we've done when in actuality, they're not holding on to anything but the fact that you haven't reached out to them after doing something that might have hurt their feelings. When they just would have been like, if you would have just said, hey, what's up? This happened. Y'all could have connected and come back together and been a healed 
community again. So being a person that doesn't mind apologizing, doesn't mind taking the time to be alone and address self before addressing other people, being an individual that tries to make dark moments beautiful because at the end of the day, you got to get through it. And it's nothing wrong with being in that moment, but it's better to be in the moment of whatever emotion it is than hide behind vices for months and months and months, feel similar feelings, go through similar situations, and they just build up and build up and build up until the vice, the addiction, the habit become so bad, so bad that you spiral into an oblivion of destruction when you could have just had a moment of cracking, crying, breaking down, being vulnerable. When you felt it, you might not have gone through those five other situations with the same vigor. Or that last situation would have hit the, wouldn't have hit the same because you've healed each time you've gone through it instead of running away from it. And I'm a big person on not running away from the problems that are in front of me. They might give me anxiety sometimes. I might lock myself in, in my own space for a long time to deal with them. But I'm choosing solitude because I want to deal with my problems. Or I'm choosing to be around people because I feel like this is helping me evolve in a certain way. I try to do everything with genuine, authentic intentions for myself and for the people around me. Self-awareness and awareness of how other people serve me. I feel like you're reciting lyrics to a song every time you go into <laughs> those uh, those long long speeches. Because you have to not only be aware of how you can serve people, being aware of how the people in your life can serve you so you're not addressing them from places of judgment that you should have an awareness about their character if you have them in your life. It's like, okay, you know this is this type of person. And you've chosen to have them in your life. with Family members that might get on your nerves. You might know they get, they're going to always get on your nerve about this one thing. And if you're going to choose to have them in your life, learning how to be graceful through those moments that might make you feel annoyed or frustrated because you honor what they do serve in your life. Not everybody is in a space to have a conversation about their faults, especially like elders and things of that nature. I am grateful to have like a family that listens to me, hears me out when I feel like there's any toxic generational curses being surfaced. So having a family that is supportive and willing to listen to things that harm me when they speak to me and are willing to tell me how I'm harming them when they speak to, when I speak to them has allowed me to pray for grace. Like I pray for grace when my mother calls my name and I'm like, why is she screaming my name in this middle of this? I'm doing homework. <laughs> I'm <laughs> typing up a document for school or I'm typing up something for a tour. She's calling my name out of nowhere. And a rolling my eyes moment for me because I'm being interrupted for her could have been her trying to show me something that she was getting for me. <laughs> show me something that she thought would make me smile. So taking the moment to breathe and be like, let me address her from a place of grace and non-judgment because she... Might not have been calling me for anything malicious. I just had might have had a reaction of, Ugh, this sucks. I got to get up and do something right now. Hope it's not to turn a light switch on or to go outside <laughs> and do a mundane task. But sometimes I don't know where her position is from. She might not truly feel like doing that mundane task because she might not be feeling good. And I could casually just be <laughs> watching TV. And honestly, coming from a place of grace, and praying for that grace makes me feel like a better daughter because I'm always trying to react to her from a place of love because I don't know what she's going through. Not everybody tells those things to anybody. So seeing what she gives to me and how she supported me through this tour and through my life, she's such a lady, such a graceful person. I'm grateful to be a reflection of such an empress. And knowing that I'm just a reflection of her and sometimes I'm just making mistakes that she made and it's okay because she's going to love me regardless and I'm going to love her regardless. And having that same vision and that same grace with all of my friends so I know how I can share myself, what boundaries I need to put up because I know that we will not be serving each other in certain ways and being honest about how I can serve somebody. 
to be like, okay, you can have my time in these kind of ways. We can create in these aspects, but I don't feel comfortable spending time with you in other ways. It's okay to want to create with somebody but not want to hang out with somebody. It's okay to feel like you only feel safe in a studio with somebody and not at a party. It's okay to only see certain people at events and not see them in your personal time. It's okay to have associates and it's okay to have friends because having an associate and a friend does not deteriorate any of the relationships. Deteriorate, yeah. It doesn't break down any of the, the beauty of the connection. It's just a different terminology and an honoring of yourself and what you want out of a person, out of people, out of your community. I can definitely say that Ash, Speck, Austin, Amber, Zay, and everybody that's come on this journey with me have become my friends. But it's people I see every weekend that are my associates. I mean, I have genuine love for them because we share genuine space together, and I feel like they share space with me from an authentic place, but I don't know their deepest joys. I don't know their deepest faults. I don't know how to, they react to, to trauma. I don't know if I'll be able to deal with how they react to trauma. And I'm an honest enough person to be like, here's how I react to certain things. Here's how I'm growing. Here's how I'm trying to heal from certain traumas. This is where I feel like I'll be healthy for you. I'm evaluating how somebody will feel healthy for me, and I'm good with having those uncomfortable conversations, even if it takes a minute before the relationship gets intimate because platonic intimacy is important, especially in romantic relationships. I've never heard those two words said together. What? Platonic intimacy? Yeah. What is that? Like, I'm going to scratch my friend's head sometimes. Like, I twist my friend's hair. I would never think to be in a sexual romantic relationship with them but i like those the thought hugs, of that i never thought of it that way those lunch dates that i have with like speck or ash austin just to talk about life and not music that's those beautiful I, i've never moments. thought of that i never thought of it that way because cuddling isn't only the most intimate thing being able to play the card games being able to play card games together and coloring together just having moments of freestyling when we all have freestyle sessions and we're just listening to a beat and it's not for the sake of trying to put out a song to meet any expectation or any certain genre we're just creating together that's intimacy i'm about to call will do you know how vulnerable it is <laughs> to create together i want to scratch his back <laughs> exactly like i bask in being able to cook for my friends yeah and some people are i know i've, I've heard interviews and seen women be like if they're not my husband or fiance, you don't cook for them. And I'm like, okay, if I'm cooking for myself after smoke session, I'm not about to make them, especially if I'm being smoked out, I'm not about to make you go to McDonald's when I know I'm about to cook salmon, some potatoes, a full course meal with corn. I'm not about to do that for myself when you're coming back to smoke with me. That's just rude, in my opinion. We're both going to have the same plate, even if I have to, Get some chicken now, and you get the chicken. I get my salmon because that's what I wanted. When I'm going to (laughs) still make a way to make sure the people around me eat in metaphorical terms and money terms and support, they're going to always be able to eat and flourish or be watered around me because I am in your life to to serve. Just like I feel like people should serve me, but it's only because life is a the purpose of life is to give and to receive. Because we come from the act of giving and receiving. Like sex is an act of giving and receiving. Birth is an act of giving and receiving. Yeah, you're making me think about things I never thought about. So from the process of sex and birth, giving life and being received from the world, everything we do from giving money to get food, every action we do is an act of giving and receiving. Our breaths, <laughs> the inhales and exhales are given and received. So since I process and see my life as an act of giving and receiving, I might not be giving a dollar to a homeless person on a camera so people can see it and I get anything out of it. That's not what I mean by giving and receiving. But I always know that my energy is being received 
by somebody and that I always claim that I'm getting things back positively. Whether or not it's just the placebo effect or not is not something <laughs> I think about. They're giving us something right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't, throw the energy to I that don't door. think about the placebo effect or if it's all in my head. I truly take what I am given and I try to make the most of that and give the most that I can and never give myself when I don't have anything to give because if I'm if I know that I'm dry and I'm lacking what is trying to pour from an empty cup going to do but strain me out because water is not going to get to the ground it's not going to get to the roots it's not going to help anybody grow if anything it's going to give everybody false hope and then make me feel bad for giving everybody false hope so when I feel like I'm not in a space to give I'm okay with allowing people to know that I'm in a space where I'm recharging I'll tell people if they feel like I'm not attentive enough that I respect them wanting, needing to readjust the relationship or find somebody else to take the fuss, <laughs> take the spot that <laughs> they have placed me in their life, depending on what they need as friends or partners. Because I have friends that have been like, if you don't call them birthdays and this and this and this, I drop, I'm dropping my friends. And like, I get that. So I try to make sure that I tend to them in different ways, but I'm not always in a space where. I'm paying attention to that, especially if there's something I try to do every year. Sometimes you just, you slip up. Yeah. You have to apologize and move forward. But not everybody has the same apology language. Not everybody has the same love language. And sometimes it's okay to understand where you might need something different or somebody else might need something different that you're unable to give. Because you can still respect. You respect that person a lot more in that aspect when you are honest from the complete jump about who you are and where you are. You have a beautiful soul. Oh, for thank sure. you. For sure. For sure. I want to go back to the family part. Yes. What does your mother think of what you're doing? Oh, she's she proud of you? Yes. I cried before I got here. got in the car on my way to get on tour. Speck, Ash, and... Austin, we're outside in the car. I was laying on her lap, oh, wow. boo-hooing. I had just gone to the altar, did communion. I tried to sit with the ancestors. I thought it was going to make me feel better. I promised a friend that I wasn't going to cry or pull at my hair this whole trip from stress. So I was like, okay, okay, this is my one moment. I ain't got in the car yet. <laughs> Time to break down. <laughs> my body said, oh, girl, before you get on this road, you're going to cry. And I was just boohooing, and I was just so nervous and anxious. But deep down, it was more so that I wanted my mom to be proud of me. I was like, the trip, I know I'm going to sing and do my thing. Even if I crack a note, I'm really confident in my presence to influence people that even if I don't sound the best, I'll still be received. So that wasn't necessarily my biggest nerve problem. I was more so concerned about making my mother proud and making my grandfather proud because they've been my biggest rocks in my spine throughout my whole life and everything that I've ever desired to do from when I used to want to be a veterinarian and a mother giving me opportunities and shelters to me wanting to be a mathematician and getting me into the best STEM programs then going into aviation and I'm a before for ride the TSU studying airport management with a minor in mass communications because I'm going to own an airline one day Is that it yeah that's the goal and my mom, the program OBAP is the Organization of Black Aviation Professionals. Somebody had passed away, unfortunately, that was over a program I had just applied for. So they weren't going to be able to do interviews to get any students involved. And my mom took over the space and allowed the interviews so I can be able to interview to get in the program. And of course, I got into the program. But she took on the responsibility of calling them and letting them know that she had offices available for them to use if they still wanted to get students involved in their ACE Academy aviation yeah. program. Yeah. And she coordinated a whole thing just so I could make sure I had an opportunity. And she's done that through my whole life. And she's been so supportive of my music journey and making sure that I was safe and secure on this tour of mine making sure that my team is safe and secure. She's the mom that at the birthday party, she's going to make sure everybody eats and she's cooking. She's cooking meals and getting food sponsored 
for the events and not just being like, oh, it's an event they're paying for. It's an experience. And she is who influences me to make sure everything that I do is an experience. Not just for myself, because coming on tour was going to be an experience for me. But my setup, the way I engage with my audience, the incense, the crystals, the candles that I put out before each set, that's not only an experience, a ritual for me, but it's something for the audience to enjoy. I bring coloring pages so people can color and truly bask in the now. I forgot to mention that. You gave me, you gave me, that was the first thing you gave me. Yeah, coloring page. You gave me coloring pages and a Coloring sticker. page is low-key meditation. Because when you're focusing, you just focus on one task. Especially if you want it to look pretty. The breaths, the intention behind finishing something. That's meditation. You don't always have to just sit down crisscross applesauce. Breathing, inhale, exhale. You can be cooking, singing, coloring, painting. It's all a form of meditation. While you're coloring, you can think, okay, red represents the root chakra. And use each crayon as a chakra and focus as you color on a chakra until the image is complete. And say, as I complete this this image, I've completed balancing my chakras. That could be a meditation. It's really all about the intentions that you put behind your activity. I love it. I love it. I love it. Are you an only child? I am an only child, grandchild, and niece on my mom's side. I have some step siblings. You have only childitis? Well, I don't think you do. What's only childitis? You don't I like to share? Oh, for sure. I have only childitis. <laughs> no shame. No shame. Game right I don't like there. people. I don't like kids on my mom still like i <laughs> like when my mom calls other children ladybug i'm like excuse you that's uh, my nickname like no like she can she can't call it no, to nobody no i, love I don't the, it can't I love be a nickname. newborn it can't be a newborn baby it can't be any nobody but me i love that nickname i'm i'm crying like i am breaking the moment she says ladybug i'd be like did you really just say that in front of me I really will cry. Oh, yeah, you have only child that. I will really sure. cry. My for granddad sure. called me his little lady. Like I'm cool with I'm cool with the people hanging out with them and 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 them. I'm cool with my mom getting people gifts, but I want y'all around too long. Get away. Cause <laughs> excuse you, y'all not gonna mooch on my people. <laughs> off my my people's love. This all my love. I just been wanting them not to mooch off my the love that I'm supposed to be getting. <laughs> But no, I have no cousins, no, no like first cousins, no first cousins, no siblings. So like your a, your mother's also an only child. Um, my mother has a bro- my brother, and he they don't have, have children. He's married. Oh, They're in Nashville. Wow. They don't have children. So it's just my granddad. My grandma passed. Her name was Star Taylor. Star. Yeah, hey. Star Lita. Super dope. It's genetic. It's genetic. Star. My granddad Joe. My grandma. My mom Tracy, and then my uncle and my auntie, and just me. Shout out to all of them. Yes. Joe's, you, you Joe's are, Elisa's. Yeah, you're you're a homogeny of all these amazing people. Yes, amazing who you that's are, my right? thing. I'm yeah. so grateful to be a reflection of some divine humans on this planet and divine ancestors. Yeah, yeah. Some divine ancestors that chose to suffer and go through some terrible, terrible things just to make sure I was in the position I am in today. So I make sure I live my life to the fullest because it would be an injustice to them because they sacrificed for me to be in these positions. There Over thinking about it as focusing on the oppression of it, I try to focus on the fact that my ancestors chose to fight oppression and be killed. Some of them chose to not jump ship when they were being transported over here but chose to stay in the chains and stay on the boat because suicide, like honorable suicide was a thing for warriors back then. So a lot of them would have jumped ship and been like, I'm not going to this new land to be turned into a slave and tortured. But some of them chose to stay. So their blood will be put into the new land. So strange fruit could grow and I could harvest it. And it's sad to say sometimes, but I take honor in the fact that some of them did choose to, endure all that to build a foundation and build the garden that they didn't get to bask in, which is why I talk about gardens so much. I noticed. Because I feel like 
my ancestors' blood, in a sense, fertilized the ground, and it took those 300, 400 years, 500, until I was here, until this new generation was here, for us to bask in that, that fruit so it wouldn't be tainted by the problems of the generations that have been here before. And we're still going through systematic racism, and there's still so much trauma in the black community and the communities of color. But with technology, with the wisdom and knowledge that's available, people are more aware and trying to change the world as much as they can. And it takes one person to influence somebody else. And I'm okay with not seeing all the change. It takes being okay with not seeing the outcome to truly make a change. And once you realize that, as long as you're paving a way, it's not going to be ignored or not seen. Somebody might see it and finish it when you're not here. But don't don't give up on it just for the sake of you might not see it out to the end because somebody might need that as a blueprint. Agreed. I realize that. I think what you're doing is watering the plants that Goddess He Junior 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 is gonna see <laughs> For sure. once he sits on the throne of Mount Olympus, Memphis, <laughs> Memphis. Mount Memphis, Memphis, Mount, Mem- Mount, Mount Memphis. We're, we're figuring it out. Mount Memphis. Mount Memphis. Memphis was Egypt. And I heard. After Egypt. That's true. Yeah, they were they were teaching me. They were Memphis, teaching me the Memphis, whole Egypt. The whole, it was a city of the dead. Wow, yes. Yeah, sound like that. Well, what's your favorite pantheon of gods? The Orishas. Why? And who are they? Tell me. Teach they me. They are European, South African deities, gods of the waters. I have altars of them. I honor them. I feel like they are a reflection of community. Like I respect Christianity. Because my ancestors were a lot of them were Catholic, so I read the Psalms and I do communion in honor of my ancestors. But I feel like the Orishas and a lot of African um, poly poly poly. Oh, uh, is it the the word Monoly. for multiple, go- multiple <laughs> yes. gods? It's polytheism. Uh, polytheism, yeah. Po- the polytheism of like African religions reflects community. Instead of like this totalitarian society that we get lost into sometimes. So, in each deity having their own, their own role they play with each other and within the community. It brings them all together because they're all needed. Obatala is like considered the Jesus of the African European community. He has this all white. He's of knowledge of lessons, but lessons from a place of grace. So when I'm in situations that I feel like are dire, I focus on him to help me get through situations. If I feel like I've done something that requires a lesson, that might not be on the the best wavelength, like I've done something low-key wrong. I'll, I'll try to honor him and pray to him and ask for his grace, understanding that a consequence may come, but not one that will harm me or my family. Then Yemaya is the mother of the waters. She is a divine queen of nurturing, of guidance. You have Oya, the goddess of change and wind, movement, shifting. Oshun, the goddess of love and beauty. I focus on her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she is a yellow goddess of golden golden beauty, for sure. You have Shango, Ogun, and Elegua. People are always scared of Elegua. They people like Doc Pop Elegba. But he's like the gatekeeper of opportunities. He is important. He holds the key to opportunities. I dig all of it. Yes, I, I love the reaches. They're amazing. I gotta look it up. I feel I feel like a part of my ancestral community, so I truly honor them for how they serve. I try to serve them. They're goddesses and gods. They don't serve me. They help me sometimes, but they don't serve. I serve them. <laughs> You're so cool. I wish I could be like you. <laughs> you know all this jazz, but uh, <laughs> and all that jazz. Oh. 
Do you know about the story of of like Troy? Like uh what was it? What is it? The um the Greek um, the Greek story, the 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 horse and Yes, and yes. It, like uh I was in Greece like two weeks ago. You were? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're so lucky. I went to Santorini for a week. Wow. For 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 the arts Mm-mm. or for school? Me and my mom went for boudoir photo shoots. Oh, hey. Yes, quite, <laughs> it was quite the time. It was a luxurious I can imagine. Trip. It was a luxurious trip. It was lovely. I was drunk on a boat. <laughs> That's so cool. Woke up hungover, unfortunate. It happens. It happens to the best of us, actually. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. But yeah, I bring up the story of Troy because um, the, the the kid, I think his name was Paris, he asked Aphrodite for the most beautiful woman in the world, and she gave him um, the wife of a king, and then they ended up going to war and fighting, and and all these people died because this guy wanted to sleep with the most beautiful, with the most beautiful woman in the world, pretty much. Shout out to Medusa because she was beautiful until haters started hating on her. I heard of that. And I heard of that too. Her. But I feel like sometimes these stories of gods and goddesses are like our reality TV shows yes. today. The Real Housewives of Mount Olympus, and <laughs> <laughs> we need a we need a Real Housewives of Mount Olympus. That would be absolutely Can you incredible. <laughs> pretty much, the blood of Zeus was that. That little animation was yeah. pretty much. Demeter was that Demeter Zeus? It might have been Demeter. Whoever uh, Zeus's I'm wife not as was, savvy as you are. With I was things. watching it's like an animation yeah. on Netflix, and basically Zeus had an affair with like a human, and had a human kid and a like a demon god kid. A demon? I know Her- Hercules. Then, is his no, no, son, no, 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 no. He had Hercules in Mount Olympus, but oh, he had okay. two different sons. Like on Earth, one was like a monster demon, evil. Yeah. One was good, half human. And one was like a demigod. They're both demigods. And one was like a monster demigod. And the other one was human demigod. So basically his wife was like, oh, you cheating on me? I'd rather put your sons against each other to fight to the death. So she went and, it like, is the real and, sent, and sent like a messenger to like yeah. lie to both of them. The gods are so, so petty. The, the wife was like, yeah, Zeus, you got me tripping. I'm not going to divorce you, but your kids, one of them are going to die. One of them will die today. The gods are petty. Like petty. The, the Greek gods, at least. I don't know about like uh, Egyptians and other no, stuff. No, the Greek gods, petty, petty, The petty. Greek ones are so petty. But I love your aesthetic. And I think when you would mention that you uh, are into aviation, and I think it fits the aesthetic almost. So you're going to be soaring, <laughs> like above us, looking down. I cannot wait on the airline. It's the goal. It's the life goal beyond air. The sky is our specialty, but it's not our limit. Amen. Amen. Uh, I love your whole aesthetic. And uh, what is going to be your legacy? What are you What are you leaving for the future? What are they going to look back on? And, and what is it going to say on your tombstone? Is I don't want you to think of it more morbid. <laughs> I'm not thinking of death. But, is death comes with life. Yeah, so. but what will be your legacy? Because from what I've heard today, I've heard so many beautiful things in every direction. You can think. I feel like I don't know what my tombstone will say yet, but I know that my legacy will be that I authentic, authentically and genuinely loved people and loved on myself while I was here. Amen. It's real simple, but I lived an ethereal life, and it definitely is important to me. Like this is an this is an this is an ethereal experience, and I use ethereal sparingly. It means too soft, too perfect for this world. And though I'm not perfect, I feel like my touch on people opens them up to how to live their life ethereally and divinely. Not just seeing me in that light, but influences them to perceive life a little more gently and a little more joyously. And all I want to do is bring a little light to people's perspective. Not of me, but of the world. Because the world can be harsh and dark. And sometimes it just takes that little bit of light to guide somebody to the end of the tunnel. I think that's what it should say. <laughs> and I saw your eyes flutter when you said the word ethereal. Is that intentional? No, I just love <laughs> that word. 
that word makes me. You like flutter. that word? You really you, you, is like, that what the word? What it's called? Fluttering when your eyes like do the. Yes. Yeah. Ethereal <laughs> is my favorite word. I just don't use it often. I dig it. I dig it. I think the title I'm going to call this episode is the ethereal. No. Ethereal, extremely delicate and light in a way that seems too perfect for this world. That's what it means. It matches you. Thank you. It's my favorite. This has been a, a really good interview. I've been educated and enlightened and uh, shown concepts that I had never even really thought about, you know, educated on concepts and gods. You're dope. Thank you. I, I'm grateful to yeah. be here with you, my friend. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for asking me to join this with you. It's allowed me to be vulnerable in a space that is not just around my, like, close friends. And I'm always open to having a deep conversation with people. But it's always a different experience letting a lot of people in. Because I'm bashful on the low. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Like, I'm super confident. But it's also, like, since I've been talking to you, my back in my head is, I'm saying, am I saying things too long? Am I talking too fast? Like, I'm very critical of myself when I'm also speaking in professional settings. So I'm super stage This right. ain't that professional. I don't know. <laughs> Everything is professional in my head. Uh, uh, it's laid back, y'all. Chill. It is. But so we're just chilling, chopping it up. The girl is nervous on the low. It's just not showing. For real? Theater. No, nah, you're, you're good. And I feel like I almost was going to say, like, wow, she has so much prepared. Like, your answers are so concise and I think and they're deep. not concise. I think they're deep, they're deep and deep. off the wall and need nah, to be more clear. Not at all. Because I'm walking away, like I said, terms like... um what did you say about friendship intimacy? Oh, yeah. You said um, platonic intimacy. Platonic intimacy. Never thought of that. Never thought of it that way at all. Uh, I never thought of I never thought of gods outside of Egypt, Greece, and a little bit of Norse, but that other cultures have that. I don't know no, anything the saints, about the saints. When, um, like the saints. Like St. Martha, the Dominator, St. Michael. Yeah, Catholic. Yeah, the Catholic saints, um, the Orishas. Where we used to call them, like I call on some of the saints a lot yeah. because you were killed if you say any of the Orishas name. And there's the seven African powers are the seven main Orishas, so a lot of the saints are tied to those seven African powers. The saints are Catholics, the gods of like Catholicism, right? And like the little, like not God, but right like beneath. his like serve, like who servers? Who yeah, like I call on Saint Anthony when I lose things. Got he's you. the saint of Helping finding lost. So you've built, you've, you've connected all these other cultures and gods and things that you've experienced together to form who you are. In a sense, I practice hoodoo, which, which is, which the, is um, a good um, version. It's like, I mean, voodoo isn't bad. You just have to be initiated into it. And that's a conversation for spirituality. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, I don't want to be spiritually me. perceived, no. <laughs> but voodoo is something you're born into and okay. something that you have to be initiated into. It's very, very, very sacred. Yeah. And I don't even know all the details of voodoo and I don't want to say anything wrong because I respect voodoo so much. Hoodoo is also a very sacred practice. And it's a practice of honor. It's like the honoring of ancestors. It taps into a little voodoo practicing, but it's a practice. It's not a religion. So you can be a Christian who practices hoodoo. I have my ancestor altar, so I feed them when I cook certain meals. I might just feel that my ancestors want something specific, like my grandmother's favorite chocolate bar or cooking a full-fledged barbecue and making sure they get their plates <laughs> first and put it on the ancestor altar first, making sure it's fresh water on the altar, yeah. talking to them, burning ancestor money to break like generational debt. Yeah. Like if your ancestors, like somebody passed away and had a lot of like debt, financial debt, spiritual conscious debt on their soul, it still, it still exists. You know how debt passes on to you, yeah. your children and stuff in real life. So that's how generational curses work. Burning too. ancestral ancestor money with the intention to clear, pay the gatekeeper for your ancestors leaves room for wealth to flow into you. Because I remember reading or watching this this clip about how you can pray for money that you need for rent, and you might get that exact amount, 
Or you might have a surplus and then lose it immediately after you pay all your bills. And it's like your ancestors taking it back because you're you're not helping them pay off their debt. So they want to help you because you're praying for to them. You're asking God to help something you need, but they also still need to pay off their debt. So they take it back, whatever surplus you have. So burning ancestor money to be able to hold on to surplus and build more wealth because you're clearing out their debt. With that makes the a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So like my, my aunt, rest in peace to my aunt, she passed away. But she um, was an alcoholic and stuff. So we used to, whenever we put alcohol on the altar, she always got a glass of water. That was intentionally her. She never got anything else. Everybody else could, but she couldn't. A white candle would burn for her. We would just pray over her cleansing and her spiritual healing so that wouldn't be passed on in the future. And for Hudu, everything is a step, and it's not always pretty. It's not always... um, it's not a love spell or a, a wealth spell. Sometimes it's a how can I get out of this habit so then I can do something intentional to bring wealth because if I don't fix the problem or work on the problem from the roots, I can't fix anything. Nothing else will be maintained. So hoodoo is about like focusing your intentions on the root of things, how to heal, see your dark side, bring light to your dark side. Because you can't you can't bring light to anything you don't acknowledge. It's not a problem if you don't say it's a problem. So until you acknowledge things that are in you that you want to fix and heal and not look at it as you're changing yourself or you're, you're being wishy-washy or letting anybody say you're switching up, when actually you're just evolving. It's okay to evolve. I like evolution, yeah. Evolution is necessary. People always say change makes us uncomfortable. But I remember I was reading somebody's tail reading and this this <laughs> stayed in my head and I said the people need to hear this. Change sometimes makes us uncomfortable, yes, but change is usually what makes us feel more comfortable with ourselves. So we'll be like, okay, if I change this about myself, if I start showing up to these places with more confidence, wearing what I want to wear, speaking in ways that might be more proper or not as proper depending on what you want or who you want to be and if the thought of it makes you happy usually the thought of that change and being that new individual and where you could be as that new person makes you joyous and happy but it's thinking about how other people receive that change truly is what makes you uncomfortable it's the people around that aren't shifting because you want them to be in a better space just like you're seeing it not the change itself. The change is usually what brings the comfort and the groundedness is the environment not shifting with you. But that means sometimes you have to leave that environment to go where you're going to be comfortable. Agreed. Agreed. Like a dandelion being brushed into the into the wind. Uh, sometimes you have to be planted in other places to thrive. Those are seeds, right? Mm-hmm. And wherever it lands, it grows? I think so. That's beautiful in itself. You right? know, they're, they're, they're not like white at first. They're not fluff. I thought they were the yellow flowers, and then they turn into the. They're they don't grow white don't like know. that. Oh, I don't know. I've been trying to figure that out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not hip on all the plants yet. I was so nervous getting ready to talk to you. No, no like no. I opened the video saying, like you have a very cool way of speaking and expressing yourself, and I was like. I got to match that energy or at least try to come close to it if possible. You have matched extravagantly. (laughs) I'm so grateful to speak with you. Thank you. And to speak in such a comfortable space. What do you do for fun? What's what's fun time look like to you? See, I love, see, I write poetry out here. So everything I do is artistic. I see. I write poetry. I'm a published model. I've covered a magazine. I write articles for magazines. I do photography. I sing, obviously, <laughs> short films and things. For fun, I I enjoy traveling for sure, and basking in nature. Going to like, not beaches because I don't really like beaches, but the man-made like river lakes that. What's a man-made? R- we have river? like a river beach in Memphis. It's a, it's a river, like a stream we have, and they've cleared out the trees and not the trees. They've cleared out. Some of the foliage and laid sand out and stuff. 
So you walk through the trail for a minute, like ten min- five minutes maybe, and then <laughs> now you're at like a secret beach. It's oh, really wow. a river. But it fluctuates with the height. Like if it storms, you're not going back there because it's gonna, the currents are going to go crazy. Yeah. It's connected to the Mississippi, I think, or something of that nature. But they've clean, made sure the water was, like, clean. They've gone through, like, the, the foliage for, like, fleas and ticks. But it's still crazy bugs out there. <laughs> crazy bugs. And I just keep a blanket in my car just in case I want to go bask and just sit in the sun or swim to a log and just lay on it because... It's so comforting. It's so grounding. I really like being in nature. I enjoy writing poetry and photography because those aren't my main sources of, like, art when it comes to, like, me using it even as a brand or a business. My poetry, I perform, and I've performed it for years, but when I'm actually writing a new poem, it's from a very, very, very deep place. Like, I have to be in a very deep emotional place to be inspired poetically. Would you be open to performing something right now? A poem? Spoken word? Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to close my eyes. I have a bell. Got it from a spiritual store. I take it. I it's so it. peaceful. Helps me set the tone for a space. Hope I can still be heard. I think so. Yes, you can. Yay. Yay. So, I'm going to do a poem, a spoken word, and I call Pitiful Princess Persephone. It is the prelude of a poetry story about Persephone and her journey through love with Hades, the god of the underworld, and how love, life, death, rebirth, all flows into one because sometimes things have to die off things have to fade to be reborn again in stronger healthier ways yes hope you all enjoy pitiful princess persephone writing passive aggressive poetry in her garden Hoping Hades forgets about her or one day feels lost without her presence. However, she doesn't want him to ever lose himself. Even if her love is left as potential energy on a shelf, she just craves his happiness and hope he's filled with kinetic abundance. She just can't be selfish. She'd rather be helpless, hot and bothered under the devil's wings, singing songs to calm lost souls because she herself longs to go home. Pitiful. Her lover got her too far gone to destinations unknown. Maybe that's why she's been spending so much time with Demeter this summer. Maybe that's why her demeanor has shifted from in love to in it just because. I mean, last spring it was fun, but look at the destruction a year has done. I mean, she was always just in it until it was done. Maybe she thought he was the one. At one point, she thought she had won by being the sun, but the sun just isn't needed in hell. And there are no other stars to guide her on how to move forward. Just because a compass points north doesn't mean it's the direction being walked toward. She took a wrong turn down the river of souls. Now she's alone with nowhere to go except to Hades' home. Pitiful Princess Persephone is me. And I'm writing passive-aggressive poetry to release this weight off of me. Things are moving slow and steadily. But I am alone and heavily in my feelings. Vulnerability got me tripping, but I have no way of dipping because I ate the pomegranate willingly. Now it's too late to regurgitate the love. 
don't want to regenerate the dynamic of us because I'm curious on how we'll end up. Probably like the rest of the love in your collection, turned to skull and bones, but even so, my love for you is quite unconditional. How pitiful. Hades has her soul to keep. Now pitiful Princess Persephone is writing passive-aggressive poetry while she wants Hades to be left happy, even if she's left lonely. And that's pitiful. But she's not me. <laughs> and that's my poem. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. I was transported. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Gratitude to you, Marvin, <laughs> at Bravery Studios. Thank you. Thank you. I'll shade to this moment. Amen. And when you're back in Jersey, we're going to do a part two. Oh, for sure. I will be letting you know when I'm back. In the city. In the East Coast. In the East Coast yes, in general. Because in general. I I don't care if you're in Rhode Island. For sure. I love the East Coast at this <laughs> point. Memphis and the East Coast. I love, love, love. I haven't really been to the West Coast, but the East Coast is win- it's winning by a landslide hey. without me even stepping foot there. Hey. So we, well, before we end, since we're talking about the topic, what's one thing you learned about Jersey in this trip that you didn't know before? <laughs> this is I, I'm just gonna go based off the like stereotype that everybody says people from Jersey are aggressive and mean and ready to like square up and fight and everybody's been so welcoming and nice to me yeah so even though I never just had this assumption that people were gonna be mean to me nobody's been aggressive or rude uh you see breaking stereotypes yes over here. the stereotypes are broken don't get it twisted though if, if, it, if the opportunity comes around um or not the opportunity so if, if sure. the challenge comes around <laughs> you gotta sure. scrap up you gotta do what you gotta I'm do sure. i'm from memphis <laughs> i have no no problem but people are quite quite welcoming quite open um quite open to the alternative sounds and i've been welcoming to like the memphis memphis crowd and being different a little weirdo bit of an alien and just being so accepted, people being so, just so welcoming. I didn't expect the the warm hug and uh, the warm honoring when I got here. I've been feeling like a queen my entire time on the East Coast. As you should. I know. I know. I was like, oh, my yeah. goodness. I just feel so grateful to be here. You guys are the first people I've met from Memphis. Oh, really? I Love was. that. Memphis, 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 Memphis. My first. And, yeah, you guys rock. This I'm is my first it. time, I I'm think, just meeting people. I was here in Jersey last time, and we were we went from Jersey right into Brooklyn. Yeah, This is my first time actually being in the city of Jersey and exploring and networking and talking to people. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. I am thoroughly. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, plug. Plug everything in. The Instagram, the okay, Spotify, so the YouTube. I am the goddessy. Honestly, you can just search the goddessy, T-H-E. G O D D E S S I E, the goddess I E. That's what I say to make it easy. If you can spell the goddess, just put an I E at the end. Ding. But that is my handle on Instagram, on all music platforms. If you were to put that on Google, T H E G O D D E S S I E, the goddess C, you'll find me <laughs> on anything that you need to find me on. So, yes. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to my voice. <laughs> a blessing to be here and share messages with you all. Shout out to Jersey. Shout out to Memphis. Yes. Everybody keep on keeping on. We're out of here. The Vibes with the Goddessy Tour 2022. <laughs>